welcome everybody. Thanks for thanks for taking the time to join us in this Kaleido series that we're trying to make weekly. Uh, we really appreciate your time, so let's try to make it as efficient as we can for you guys. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite features about Kaleido. It's called the Blockchain Application Firewall. It's, a, it's been a game changer in my, in my opinion, and hopefully the demo that I'm about to show explains why. So just a little bit, a little overview of what this configuration is about. It provides rich options for authentication and authorization of users to communicate to your blockchain resources through our Kaleido node. Um, just to give you a little bit of overview, I'm just gonna talk a little bit first about how this um, blockchain application firewall works, and then we'll go ahead and show you how to configure one of these configurations from scratch uh, and apply this to your node to be able to integrate this with your application. And I'm gonna show a demo at the end of an application that showcase the, the features about the blockchain application firewall. So hopefully, so hopefully after this presentation, you will have a clear understanding of how to use the block, uh, this configuration. We're gonna call it the bath just from now on to make it, to make it simpler. So let me go and show you some slides that I have specially for it. In here, um, first of all, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of background. You probably have heard this in the previous Tech Tuesdays uh, and have a clear understanding now about the REST API gateway, but it, it's, a, it's a feature of Kaleido. It's a pretty robust middleware that allows you to communicate to your Kaleido node and to a smart contract, for example, or any blockchain resources through your Kaleido node in, through a RESTful API gateway that Kaleido auto-generates for you. It will handle for you a, a synchronous call through Kafka messaging, for example, high throughputs as well, nonce management, gas prices also will handle for you the signing of accounts with any wallet account that you have integrated through in, inside of Kaleido uh, such as the Kaleido wallet, HD wallet, or a cloud HSM wallet that you store in your own storage just out of Kaleido, as long as you have had integrated this into our, into our platform. It will handle uh, everything for you to make it super simple to communicate to a blockchain node, to a Kaleido node, without no, having to know anything about blockchain or about signing transactions or all these kind of um, challenges that you face when you're, always try when you're trying to communicate to an Ethereum node. Also, Kaleido provides the option of communicating just directly into the node through a JSON RPC call, as you will do to any other blockchain node outside. And just Kaleido is just about flexibility. In case you wanted to externally sign transactions or, or things like that, this will be the, the best way to do it. And for the sake of this demo, we are going to use a calls directly into the node into, through JSON RPC calls, because we wanted to externally sign transactions but I just wanted to, to, to let you know that you could do this both ways. And the blockchain application firewall, the BAF, uh, will provide the option to communicate to your node through directly to the node or through the gateway API as well. So that's important to know. Uh, now let's go ahead and explain a little bit of what the BAF can do. It has two sides of it. There is an authentication side and there is an authorization side. For the authorization side, the, we, you will be able to integrate any open id provider both with zero compliant um, through kaleido and authenticate your users through it it could be any kind it could be cognito it could be keycloak that that's the one that we're going to use for this presentation a firebase or any any authenticator out there any open id provider will be easily integrated into kaleido the only thing that we you will need to do is to provide kaleido with the public key that this open ID provider is going to use to encrypt the access tokens of your users. This way Kaleido will know when a user is authenticated and has free uh, access to your node. Um, before this, something important to note is the only way that you will have been able to uh, communicate your Kaleido node to make these calls, either through the JSON RPC or the Gateway API, you will, uh, you will have needed app credentials in order to do this. Now, this, the, block, the BAF provides the option of communicating to your resources without having to need, without, without the need of any application credentials from Kaleido in your application, making it super easy to scale and also more secure. The other side to it is the authorization side. You will be able to map the roles of the users in your OpenID provider 
to certain rule sets inside of inside of that configuration. And you and these rule sets can be super specific. They can be really granular, granular, and that's the power of the blockchain application firewall. You can specify who you want the user to send a transaction to or from. You can you can specify if you want them to be able to deploy contracts or just or do any kind of send transactions into the node into the into the through the node or a read call, for example. It can become super granular and we have a whole documentation that explains how detailed these rule sets can be. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a flow diagram, the super simple flow that this is going to represent our application that I'm gonna demo for you in a second. Um, it's a super simple application that we did to simulate and it featured the, like, the power of the blockchain application firewall. That's the only purpose of it. It doesn't have any business case whatsoever in behind. The, um, for the sake of this application, we're gonna have three different users that will have three different roles. Uh, we're gonna have an admin, we're gonna have a vendor, and we're gonna have a customer. And each of these roles will be mapped to a certain rule set, as I explained before, that I'm gonna show you how to configure inside of the BAF uh, allowing them or denying them from doing certain actions inside of our node. So the way that this is gonna work, they're gonna come to our application. Once they're here, they will be redirected to my OpenID provider that I'm running locally. I'm running a, a key cloak server locally. And they, they, once they're there, they're gonna be able to authenticate themselves through a username and password. And once they are authenticated, they're gonna be taken back to my application with a JWT token which will be the access token that I'm gonna use to make all the, all the calls to my Kaleido node and uh, without the need of any app credentials. This is really important and I might, I'm gonna repeat this through the whole presentation because this is, this is a game changer for Kaleido. Once, um, once the user has the access token, he will be able to do all the calls and he will be denied or allowed to do certain actions inside of our application just based on the role that he has on the OpenID provider. The UI calls will be exactly the same. There is no UI work to prevent the user from doing things that he's not allowed to. So all the security is happening inside of Kaleo. Now, having explained that, I'm gonna go ahead and take you into the Kaleo console and teach you how, how I configure this um, BAP configuration in order to create this demo. So I have here a network that I call BAP demo. That's the one that I use for this, into which I only have one environment, so I'm taking directly into the environment. The first thing that I talk about was the authorization of users. So in order to let Kaleido know about the public key that my, that my key clock server is going to use to authenticate the users, I need to, let, I need to go to apps and integrations, go into the security tab, and there will be a place called OAuth configurations. In order to create a new configuration, super easy. You attach it to, you select a membership. As always, every resource in Kaleido will be linked and owned by a membership. Uh, I'll give it a name. And once I'm here, uh, as, as, um, as you can see, it's, it's super flexible. You can provide any kind of public key, being it a JSON web key store, an RSA pen file, an EC pen file as well. And uh, the only thing that you will need to do is to copy paste a public key here. In the case of KeyClub, for example, which is the one that I'm using uh, for this demo, it will, it's the only thing that I'll have to do is take an ERC uh, type public key, get the public key, copy and paste it, and then create it. And that's all you need to do for Kaleido to be able to know that a user is correctly authenticated by your OpenID provider. So I had already done that before, and this is the public key that I just showed you with the name of Keycloak. Now, when having done this, uh, the next step will be for the authorization side and actually creating the, configure, the blockchain application firewall configuration. So we're gonna go to application firewall. You're gonna see a screen really similar to uh, all the other configurations that we currently have integrated into this new experience, like the cloud configurations. It's gonna behave in a similar way. Uh, I had already created a configuration file for, for this demo, so we're gonna go inside of that one and explain to you uh, the details of it. So the first thing, I'm, I'm gonna provide a name to the configuration. You can select the login level that you want. I have it in, dev, in debug mode. Um, 
but this is the important part. This is where I'm going to specify the rule sets that I want my users to be able to be mapped to. So as I said before, I'm going to have three users. So I created three different rule sets for them. The first one is the admin rule set. This will allow, as, as the name says, that the, any user that is mapped to this rule set will be able to do any kind of actions inside of my, in my environment through my blockchain node. It's gonna have, as you say, it's a, it's any, any method is allowed and a, all the actions are allowed as well. My second rule set is called read, write, no deploy, externally signed transactions. The reason why I call it this way is because the user that is mapped to this, this rule set will be able to read from my blockchain, will be able to do write calls, send transactions. It's not going to be able to deploy any new smart contracts and it's only gonna be able to do this externally signing the transactions. So that means that they are not gonna be able to communicate through my gateway API. So you can also block that from, uh, from the configuration. And the way that I do that, I allow them to, be, to do transactions from and to anybody. Uh, they will be able to do call transactions. Deployment will be false. It's just simply Boolean that you have to input and Kaleido will handle the rest for you. Uh, it can estimate gas to be able to send transactions. The send is false because I don't want it to be able to send transactions through the gateway API but they can, saw, they can send raw transactions directly into my node, externally signing those transactions. So they should be good on that end. The last rule set that I'm gonna do is the read only rule set. This will only give them permission as an M says to read from the blockchain, to read from a smart contract, for example, but they won't be able to trigger any transactions inside of my blockchain. So you can see everything is set to false except for the call uh, param. The, that, that's, this is a super easy way to set up the rule sets. And once you have done that, the last thing to do is to be able to uh, map the roles of the users to these rule sets. So the first thing that you have to do, you have to enable the uh, web token verification to be able to authenticate users to your WT tokens. Uh, you can set that in the configuration, it's just a Boolean as well. And after that, you can, uh, let Kaleido know how to grab the role from the, your uh, JWT token and map it to the rule set that you want to use. In this case, I'm going to map the role of admin of any user that I authenticate to my OpenID provider that has this role will be mapped directly into this rule set. Same for the vendor. Every, every vendor user is going to be mapped to my read, write, no deploy rule set. And my customers are just gonna be are, are gonna make, be mapped to my read-only rule set, and doesn't matter how many users you have, it's gonna scale accordingly into your application as long as these users have the proper roles. Um, this is a super complex configuration. It's one of the most complex configurations that we currently have on the platform, and we have done a uh, we have worked hard into trying to make it as user friendly as possible into the UI experience. Uh, but of course, it's a super complex, there's a lot to learn. So if, we want, if you wanted to go into detail with it, we will be super happy to schedule a call with you guys and try to and guide you through, through the process as well. The last thing to notice here is that any other configuration inside of Kaleido, you will have to attach this to a node. And this is really important because this means that only the node that has this configuration attached will validate users uh, the way that you had set up the configuration. So I can only make calls um, through this specific node using that uh, JWT token, for example, because if I try to do it through any other node, the call uh, is not gonna be successful. So that's super important to note, you need to attach it to a node and then you need to reset the node to apply the configuration. And we handle, we handle that for you in the UI as well. So having explained that, let's go to the phone part. Um, we're gonna go into my blocks floor because I want you guys to see the transactions being triggered in the back. We're gonna come to, her, to my application. And as I told you before, this is a super simple application. I'm running it. It's a, a native mobile app that I'm simulating into my emulator. It's super simple. It has no database. It was just built for the purpose of explaining the features of the blockchain application firewall. And the, something to notice is that, as I said, it doesn't have any database. So every time that I create something, it's gonna be storing the cache of the emulator. And I'll explain this as, as I go. As I told you before, I'm gonna try to authenticate myself. 
and this is going to redirect me to my local people instance that I have. I'm going to now authenticate my user with a username as password. And once I'm in, you can see here that I got the role of admin. I got that from the YEDUT token that my OpenID provider returned. And this is what Kaleido is going to see as well. Here, I'm going to create a wallet because, as I said, I'm going to externally sign the transactions. I'm communicating, communicating directly into my node. And this public and private key is going to be stored in the cache. And as soon as I sign out, it's going to be deleted from my application. Now, I'm going to try to deploy a contract. These calls are being made without any app credentials, as I said. It's a RESTful call directly into my node with the JWT token that my OpenID provider generated for me. And as you see, the deployment was successful and the transaction was triggered in the back. I'm gonna, the application is going to take this address and store it internally into the mobile emulator uh, without deleting it once I log out for all the users to be able to deploy transactions to this country. As you see, the address finished in 7F. We can, be, we can verify that that's the address of the contract inside of the transaction that was generated. And you can see that that was actually the contract that was, my, uh, that was created and deployed into my chain through the transaction. So let's back to the Explorer. And we're going to try to do a different call. This is a send transaction. The contract that I deployed is a super simple contract. It's called simple storage. The only purpose of this contract is to store values and read values from it. So it's a setter and getter contract just for the purpose of the application to be able to make three different calls. So I'm going to do a send transaction. Again, this is my admin. He should have permissions to do everything he wanted. So he shouldn't have any issues doing this. The UI is going to do the call. And it's OK. You can see that on the block for in the back. Lastly, I'm just going to read from that same contract and just see the value as well. Now, I'm going to do the exact same calls. The UI doesn't do anything different. But now I'm going to do it through a different user that I had created before. Well, my vendor user. This vendor user is going to have the role of vendor. And now we're going to try to do the same calls. I'm going to try to deploy a contract, a new contract from scratch. But remember that this role was mapped to the uh, read, send, and no deploy rule set, meaning that he can deploy contracts. So automatically, Kaleido blocks that call. No transaction was generated. And my user was in out of uh, doing this action. He to, however, be able to communicate to that contract and send a transaction to that contract that was previously deployed. We can verify that here. I'm going to try to modify the value that is stored in the contract to a number eight. And the transaction was successful. You see that begin uh, showing the blocks were in the bag. And now we're going to try to read from it. And we can see that the value was correctly stored in the contract as well. Lastly, I'm just going to do the exact same process with my a customer user. I can type my password correctly. And I'm going to try to do the same calls. This one has even less permission, so he shouldn't be able to deploy any contracts. He shouldn't be able to do any same transactions. But he should be able to read from the contract that was previously deployed. You can see that the, the, that's the number eight, and that no transactions were triggered in my Block Explorer. Um, so if this is, this is, hopefully this shows you how powerful the blockchain application firewall could be and help you to do things properly as well, to be able to set the securities in the back, in Kaleido, in the server, instead of the UI. Now you can do anything that you wanted in the UI to be able to see, show certain permissions, but you know that your application is safely secure to only allow the users that you want to be allowed to generate certain calls on Kaleido. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys and if you have, as I said before, if you have questions, this is a pretty complex configuration that can go super granular and that's what makes it as powerful as it is. So we'll be happy to guide you through it. Uh, just reach out to us and we'll, we'll be happy to schedule a call with you guys and show you how you can configure this in your own applications. So thank you guys and hope to see you next week as well.